So my neighbors just got into a fight. Don't know what they were arguing about, but there was loud banging on the wall that we share. Maybe like two or three hard kind of like thumps. By the time I make it to the window, I see my rapper neighbor storming out of the apartment, walking around the building. I could hear his lady, I don't know if she's his wife or girlfriend or whatever, but I can hear her inside. She wasn't crying or anything, so I don't think that he struck her. I don't know. So I just kind of stand outside for, for a little while and he comes back around the corner. And I ask him, I'm just like, y'all okay? And he seemed a little embarrassed, but he was just like, yeah, man, we're okay, we're fine, we're okay. So you can go, you can go back inside, we're, we're okay. It's like, well, I'm a grown ass man. <laughs> I can stand wherever the fuck I want, but you know, I was just like, all right. And I watched him go inside his apartment. I had several immediate thoughts and I hope that they don't make me a bad person. First thought was, does this mean they're gonna break up and move out? <laughs> At least one of them, hopefully him. And then the second thought was, I am glad that I'm single. That is probably a horrible thing to think, but I ain't gonna lie to y'all, especially over the past year. I don't, I don't know how well I would have been able to manage the events of the past year if I were not alone. Like if I had been married or in a relationship, if I had kids, if I had someone to take care of, I just don't see how, how I would have been able to do it. Like I'm really in awe of the people that have been able to do it. I've seen relationships deteriorate. I've either seen or like heard from friends. I've also seen, you know, a bunch of relationships blossom because of the events of the past year. And I think that that's awesome. I was not going to put myself out there. I just wasn't ready to, but, but like I said, I just seen a lot of relationships go downhill and it is the whole, we're trapped together, stuck together 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So I hope they are okay because I don't want to have to be that neighbor <laughs> that calls the police and has to give some sort of statement. I like to stay out of other people's business, but not when people are being hurt. Pretty sure this is an anomaly because I've never, like in the six months that I've been here, like I've never heard anything like that. And hell, they were even 12 hours ago, they were giggling and horse playing and shit. I could hear them through the walls. So I'm, I'm, I'm fairly certain that this was an anomaly. Just one that included pounding on the wall. Honestly, I, I hope they make up. I hope they're having makeup sex right now. <laughs> so I was on Twitter and came across this tweet from someone named Michael Samanek. Hey Mike, how you doing? <laughs> and pretty much Mike's tweet was, it was like a response to the John August Craig Mays and Script Notes podcast in which they talk about quitting. And in his tweet, Mike linked to his blog, where he pretty much gives an explanation for why he quit the business, specifically the pursuit of screenwriting. So he said like, you know, he got into animation, I guess back in the 90s, he did well, he was able to sell a spec script in the early aughts. And for about the next decade, he was considered a hot screenwriter. Now he said he really didn't sell like another script. He got consistent work, I guess, like as a script doctor or pitching or, you know, writing scripts, you know, and selling scripts that never got made. But ultimately, things just didn't happen. Like, yeah, he admits he got paid handsomely. You know, he's like, I was able to buy a house. I was able to set up a nice pension for myself, blah, blah, blah. But he wasn't writing material that was getting made. And as a result, he wasn't developing like this track record of produced work. And so ultimately he lost the heat that was on him. I think about Entourage all the time because Jeremy Piven as Ari Gold would always talk about heat, being hot, being hot. And I guess Michael lost that heat. And at one point in his blog post, he says, you know, he didn't even, he didn't even become cold. He essentially became dead. And in reaching this kind of like dead status, 
He felt that there was nothing more that he could do. He said he stopped communicating with his reps because what was the point? He said that he felt that, you know, he had his time, but his time had run its course and he made the decision to move on. He said he even entertained the thought of maybe trying to juggle screenwriting with another career, but he just didn't have like the discipline and the energy to like really focus on both. And so he decided to move on. He did say that he did not want this to discourage people from trying to break into the industry. Just want to tell his story. The thing is, I can, I can kind of relate. I've sort of been feeling this way lately, to be honest with y'all. Especially after, you know, just after the past couple of years. Come out here and I link up with some people and, you know, I've been working on this script. And, and the thing is, I worked on the script for about two years. Two years. And entering into this third year, it's kind of like, all right, what the hell are we doing? What am I doing? <laughs> you know, things that were said to me, things that were promised to me aren't happening and there's there's just been this feeling that I've wasted time and perhaps in another video I'll, I'll talk about all that but essentially you know I, I worked on this script for two years thinking that something was going to happen with it and nothing happened. I've actually written another script since Chomp which took no time at all although I need to, to go back and, and, and rework it rewrite it but it's just this it's just been this feeling of what am I doing this for? <laughs> am I wasting my time? Should I think about quitting and moving on to something else? Or should I just say fuck it and settle into a life of mediocrity? And that is really, no, that's really not, that's not an option for me. <laughs> Y'all know me, that's not an option for me. But reading Michael's post really, it just really made me think. And there's this massive screenwriting community on Twitter. And it's just, it's both motivating and depressing, I'll say that. I'll just honestly say that because you see some people who are working their ass off, who are writing, who are putting themselves out there, promoting their scripts, trying to get representation, doing all the things that they say you should do, and you just see it. It's just like it's not happening for them. It's just not happening for them. Entering contests and, and, and whatever, and it's not happening for them. And then you also see some writers, and it just seems to happen like that. It's just like, you know, they tweet out, oh, I'm happy to announce that I'm represented by so-and-so, or, oh, I I'm got a meeting with this producer or with this manager or agent, or I'm staffed on this TV show. And that can, you know, it can wear on you to see people, especially, and I'm going to say like this, especially to see people who are younger than you. I'm old, y'all. <laughs> I'm old. And I've been chasing this dream since I was a kid. And for me to see people who are kids to me tweet, I got staffed on this show. I sold this script. I got representation. It's just like, what in the world are they doing that I'm not doing? What connection did they make? Who did they wow? What script did they write? Like, and it can really feel like you're chasing like a feudal dream. But the thing is, I love it. I love movies. As crazy as this may sound, I love the craft of screenwriting. Like, I love screenwriting. I love the format of the screenplay. I love printing a script out on three-hole paper and binding the script with Akko brads and washers. You know, like, I'm insane like that. Like, I, I love printing scripts out and, and reading them. Like, I'm actually passionate about the craft. I'm passionate about storytelling. Give me your three-act structure. Give me your Sid Field. Give me your 15 beats from Blake Snyder. <laughs> Give me all of your story notes from McKee. Like, give me all that shit. <laughs> I'm into it. You no, know, I have a dream to win an Oscar one day. I'm going to win an Oscar. Like, I keep saying that. Like, that is... For me, and I know people are just like, ah, fuck the Oscars and the awards, and you know, it's white people nonsense, and hmm, I don't, I don't care. <laughs> That's a goal that, that I've wanted to achieve since I was a kid. So I want to win an Oscar for screenwriting. Original screenplay. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll take adapted if that's what I get. <laughs> but that's 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 something that I'm working toward. Like I want to write a film that's seen and beloved by people. And the passion is still there. It it's still there. Even though I think about whether I should quit, the passion is still there. I hope it's evident in my vlogs. 
a large reason why I'm creating these vlogs is because for me, I'm making films. My vlogs are usually peppered with some sort of film Easter egg or reference, or maybe I'm just talking about my love for movies, but I am making movies when I vlog, and I'm doing this until I'm able to make real movies, whether it's within the studio system or whether it's, you know, independently with like-minded people, but that's, that's my goal. That's what I want to do. The passion is still there. And that's why I can't, I can't give up. I can't quit. So I respect Michael and people like Michael who feel that they've run their course, they've done what they could do, and it's time to move on. But I don't think it'll ever be time for me to, I don't, I don't think I'll ever move on. <laughs> I can. And if you're thinking of quitting, and I, I'm not even screenwriting, but you know, just whatever your dream, whatever your passion is, it could be, could be making hip hop music. <laughs> whatever your dream is if you've got the passion for it I would say don't give up don't give up there was another tweet that was going around today and it's from someone named David Walker and he and I'm gonna read this his tweet said if you think you're too old to pursue your dreams or try new things I didn't get paid to be a writer until I was in my 30s. I didn't get my undergrad degree or make a living wage in comics until I was in my 40s next up selling a screenplay in my 50s and I felt that right there with you Dave I'm right there with you <laughs> so we'll see <laughs>